Right, let's keep the momentum going. The 20th video starts with the cylinder head. Let's get it assembled. Right, so valve springs, collets uh, going on. You can see there I've already put the stem seals on. Uh, they're strange in that they don't have a steel outer liner, which sort of helps them grip. But they do have a little lip at the bottom edge, which goes into a little groove on the valve stem. Uh, and only, I forget if it's in it, so the, all the exhaust, but only four of them had springs that tighten against the actual valve. So uh, that was a bit weird. But they fitted. They came from Turner, so I trust they're the right thing. And uh, the valve springs, another strange thing, normally associated with high-performance engines. They uh, have double valve springs on here. I don't know why, but um, there we go. <laughs> I don't think it's a particularly high-performance engine, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's it. All those back on the usual way with the valve spring compressor. There we go. All done. Yeah, those two will be the new exhaust valves. Yeah, there we go. Let's get that head on. I think it's time. Quick clean up, head, head gasket on, no dowels here, so get everything lined up. And then uh, in this case, an older engine, there's 18 head bolts to go in, so six around each cylinder, uh, whereas you'd normally get four on a more modern engine. So because there's no dowel, I get them in loosely, and then you can see here, I uh, give the head a wobble side to side and forward and back and find the middle point. So it's nice and central before winding those bolts down further and, uh, and holding it in place then uh, indefinitely. You can see those head bolts that are still sticking up, those five, uh, actually retain the rockers. So I've got to get the rocker on, whip those head bolts off before I can do the full talking sequence. So there's five little bolts that hold the rocker down and then the other five that hold the back end of the rocker uh, posts, they, they are part of the head bolt assembly. So once that's done, uh, then I can talk them all up. So here we go, going through all the talk sequence now. Very long-winded, three stages and of course 18 bolts, so it takes a while, a bit of a workout in the uh, warm weather. There was obviously assembly loop on uh, on those push rods and rockers. So that's the torquing done. Next uh, I can spin the engine, you see I've just put the nut in loosely, so I can turn the engine over. Uh, so I'm watching, I'm just working front to back, you can do this in a sequence from the book, but I'm working front to back. Um, push the rock until it moves and then take it a good half turn uh, away, so that it's definitely on the heel of the cam thing is the front cover so I've got to do a little bit of painting with a brush around here where I sort of didn't get it uh, and a few other bits while I'm there a bit of exposed metal around the gaps and things like that right here I'm using engine enamel which is um, a duck egg blue engine enamel for Land Rovers that I bought off eBay and uh, I've thinned it down to spray it and it it paints beautifully with the brush it really uh, finds a, a, a level you know and gives it gives a good coat uh, which is not the, what I can say for hammer I've used for the black which um, sprays nicely but paints awfully bad so yeah, a few little bits to do. I want this engine to look nice and smart for the owner because he hasn't seen the progress on this uh, for a while at this point. So I want it looking amazing in the chassis. So I've paid a lot of attention to detail here. And then I was doing some lock wiring. Those bolts that hold the cam follower buckets in place, uh, they don't really have much um, bolt intention. So uh, the original uh, manufacturer there put lock wire in there. So I'm trying to replicate that with the stainless steel welding wire. It's not doing an amazing job, but it would work. Uh, but to add to it, I've put a little thread lock on each of those bolts, so that should uh, that should keep them in place uh, with the lock wire. So that is the uh, aesthetic stuff on the lock wire done. Um, so, um, so before I put the cover on, I've got to put the seal in here, which seals on the crank pulley. As you can see, the crank pulley has got some fairly serious wear where the seal rode before. So you can get repairs for this. You get a slightly oversized seal and then you put a sleeve on here, you lock tight a sleeve on here, but I'm going to be doing it a slightly different way. The wear is there. The metal here is perfectly good. So I'm just going to push the seal in, it comes in from the back that way. I'm going to push it in a little bit less basically. So the seal lip, instead of riding uh, in that groove, it rides just down here. Hopefully that will um, mean the seal will work. So let's do that. I'm hammering the front crank seal in now, making sure not to take it to its full extent. I've left it about five to three to five mil, maybe short of all the way in, but it's still plenty in. The groove that it sits in is bigger than the seal. Now I'm offering it up, uh, just loosely tightening some bolts in. And you'll see now that I'm measuring the distance from the um, camshaft, the cam chain sprocket on the crankshaft to the seal lip and I've translated that to the pulley and you can see that it won't sit where the old one did sit. So there's a, a good clearance and it's on fresh metal, uh, which is good. And now this front cover can go on. New gasket and of course, as I've spoken about many times, I'm addicted to gasket sealant. Once you've got it, you can't stop using it. So it, uh, it goes on both faces. So I'm putting it on the, um, on the cover, stick the gasket on and then putting it 
uh, on the back of the gasket as well so there's really no way that thing is going to leak uh, tighten those down and then I make the first mistake with the uh, the two bolts well the, the one bolt nearest where the crank is look you can see I've wound the crank pulley on and of course I got those bolts that won't go in so uh, that crank pulley's got to come off again which was a real pain in the bum and did a bit of damage to the paint which I had to fix later but eventually I got it off as you can see <laughs> uh, unfortunately I did do this twice uh, what a muppet because now you can see there's the little timing um, little bent piece of steel that marks the top dead center point against the crank pulley I've put it on the wrong way around so that crank pulley's got to come off again which is a real pain in the bum so there you go I've wound it on <laughs> realize my mistake later anyway it's time for the sump so again with the sealer I don't plan on taking the sump off again anytime soon sealer on there and sealer on the far side as well on the sump side of the gasket so it will be glued on uh, but it certainly won't be leaking from there if anyway it'll be the, the back crank seal because of its crazy design I think so I'll wind those bolts all down lots of them and, uh, and that really completes the bottom end uh, of the engine so here's a bit of stop motion I couldn't help myself this would be the last bit of stop motion really with um, the engine uh, you know all the, hit all the moving parts being hidden after this really so you can see all the rockers moving in sequence there. So I'm going to glue this cork gasket onto the head, but I will need to get back into uh, the rocker cover. So I won't glue the top. So the bottom being the better place because the gasket can stay down with the head. And of course, um, it'll be more immersed in oil lower down. So and there we go. And the three little bolts very loosely tightened uh, to, re to retain that and push it against the cork gasket. Last thing then is to put on this oil pipe, which connects the oil galleries in the block to the oil galleries in the head. Uh, it's done externally on modern engines it's through the head gasket some little hole in the internal drillings of the engine but here it's on the uh, on the back of the block and it, it translates the oil up that's all for this video folks that is a short block i believe plus an oil filter and a water pump <laughs> so those are the really bulky components all together the uh, hard working parts of the engine all together there's now a load of things to go on the outside of it and it needs to be uh, attached to the gearbox with the flywheel and the clutch and so on so the next uh, video will have us taking that off the stand and putting the flywheel on and all of those things. Stay tuned, more exciting engine building videos to come. Thanks for watching. All right, what's next? What parts go on next? Uh... <laughs>